commitment is a powerful force in serving others. With that strong commitment, we are able to carry the message of hope that may support us all in our recovery. Commitment is a decision supported by our believing now as a way of life. Regular meeting attendance is one of the ways in which we live off that belief. Greeting newcomers as they arrive or giving our telephone number to someone who needs help also reflects our decision. Sponsorship, sharing in meetings, setting up chairs before a meeting all these are ways in which we express our commitment. Each member finds a level of service that fits comfortably into a balanced program of recovery. Selflessness is another indispensable element in unity. The principles we learn in the steps help us let go of our selfishness and lovingly serve the needs of others. Keep our books healthy. We place the needs of our food fed on our own personal desires. The same principle applies to our affairs as we go. Setting aside what we may want as we go, we think about the needs of the fellowship and the boys to support our common good. Our ability to survive as a fellowship and to reach others depends on our unity. Love is a principle that is expressed in the practice of moving toward one another. We contribute to unity in our meetings by exercising loving care in the way we speak and the way we treat one another. We try to share our experience, strength, and hope in a way which demonstrates that recovery is available in Narcotics Anonymous. An atmosphere of love and care in our meetings helps members feel comfortable and safe. The love we show each other attracts newcomers and strengthens us all, fueling our sense of unity and common welfare. Anonymity, the spiritual foundation of our traditions. Supports not unity as well. When we apply anonymity to the first tradition, we overlook the differences that will separate us. In the context of unity, anonymity means that the message of recovery is forever added. Who wants it? We learn to set aside our prejudices and focus on our common identity as addicts. Each of us has an equal right to and responsibility for the well-being of Narcotics Anonymous. Just as anonymity is the spiritual foundation of our tradition, the unity spoken of in the first tradition is the practical foundation on which we make peaceful and successful groups. Each succeeding tradition builds upon the strength of our unity as a fellowship, recalling the vital importance of the common welfare to each individual member and group. With unity as our practical foundation, we find that our relationship with one another 
is more important than any issue that may arise divide us. No problem or disagreement is more significant than our need for each other's support. The fundamental importance of our common welfare strengthens our understanding of all the other traditions. Many questions can be answered simply by determining how the action we contemplate will affect the unity of the fellowship. We it serve to divide us, or we it bring us closer together. Unity is the spirit that takes members around the world in a spiritual fellowship that has the power to change lives. By striving to see beyond our individual ideas and the interests of our own group, we come to understand that the common welfare of all now must come first. Through our trust in a loving higher power, we find the strength to work together toward our shared goal of recovery from addiction. In the unity that works in trust, we are ready to work together for our common good. Tradition 2. Will she? For our group purpose, there is but one ultimate authority a loving God as he may express himself in our group functions. Our leaders are but trusted servants. They do not govern. Tradition 2 gives on the practical foundation of Tradition 1. We begin with unity. Founded on the strength of our commitment to recovery in Narcotics Anonymous. Our commitment is reflected in service that builds our common welfare, supporting a meeting, sharing with other members, sponsorship, and the other ways in which we reach out to other addicts. As groups, groups, our purpose is to serve, to carry the message. Everything we do in service to now is related to that purpose. Without the action, however, our services might lack consistency to guide us in serving others. We seek direction from a higher power. Personal service arises from the application of principles. Ideally, personal service is funded in a relationship with the same higher power that guides our personal recovery. This higher power also gets the various elements of our fellowship. Our direction in service comes from a God of our understanding, whether we serve as individuals, as a group, or as a service board or committee. Whenever we come together, we seek the presence and guidance of this loving higher power. This direction then guides us through all our actions. Everybody has opinions on how to serve more effectively. When we each propose a different plan for any course of action, how do we choose among them? Yes, the final say in our discussions. Our answer is that a loving God, the source of our unity, has the final say the same higher power that backs our personal recovery. 
If we are to find guidance from an ultimate authority, we need to find means of hearing that guidance together. The mechanism we use is group conscience. The success of the group conscience process depends on our willingness as individuals to seek guidance from a higher power on a personal level. We then bring that willingness into the group setting. Something happens when we practice the steps and learn to apply principles in our individual lives. We develop an awareness of our behavior and its effects on ourselves and others. In other words, we develop a conscience. This conscience is a reflection of our relationship with a higher power. It reflects the guidance we receive from the God of our understanding and our commitment to follow that guidance. Whenever we come together in our group, a similar process may occur, a collective conscience develops. That conscience reflects the relationship of our members to a loving higher power. When consulted regularly, that collective conscience gets us in fulfilling our primary purpose while preserving our unity and common welfare. Group conscience can be set up in much the same way as personal conscience. Group conscience reflects a collective awareness of, understanding of, and surrender to spiritual principles. The conscience of a group takes shape and is revealed when its members take the time to talk with each other about their personal needs, the needs of that group, and the needs of now as a whole. Each member draws upon his or her relationship with a higher power when he or she sharing with the group. As members listen carefully to each other and consult their personal understanding of a loving God, something happens. Solutions to problems become apparent. Solutions that take into consideration the needs of everyone concerned. In developing a group conscience, a clear mutual understanding or consensus arises. Based upon the understanding made by sharing group conscience, a group may move on to a group in order to make decisions. In the best of circumstances, however, the group continues discussion until it reaches unanimity. The resulting solution may be so obvious that no more is needed. Group conscience is not fixed and inflexible. We know that personal conscience changes as an individual's relationship with a higher power goes and strengthens. In the same way, the conscience of a group evolves as its members mature in recovery. New members arrive, and the group's situation changes. Conscience is a process that may work differently under differing circumstances. It's not reasonable to expect that for this solution to one group's needs will always be sufficient for every group. In fact, 
Solution may not even apply to the same group at a different time. The principles involved in group functions are always the same, but the times and conditions are functions that us so are constantly changing. Requiring our conscience to tell us different things in different settings. It's important for us to continue cultivating our group conscience, seeking the guidance of a loving higher power whenever a question arises. They surrender to group conscience means we allow our fellowship to be shaped by a loving higher power. We are tempted sometimes to take control of the daily effect of our group, our service board, for our committee, believing that our great concern for the fellowship's welfare could never lead us astray. However, as we become more trusty, we realize that the group is directed by a loving higher power. Our reliance on that higher power is demonstrated by our willingness to carry out the direction expressed in our group conscience, believing that all will be well. Any group, or, or committee can become both down in disagreement or sidetracked by seemingly insurmountable problems. In these situations, it's important to focus our attention on the principle of the program and the solution they point the world, not on our problems. Agreement is reached when we step out of the way and allow a loving higher power to direct us. Only when we listen for the direction of a higher power are we able to hear it. The conscience of a group is most clearly expressed when every member is considered an equal. A higher power works to all of us, regardless of clean time or experience. Group conscience always exists, but we are not always willing or able to hear it or allow its expression. Hearing group conscience may take time and patience. A flexible approach invites a loving higher power into our group conscience process. In our personal recovery, our steps and actions change as we stay clean and grow spiritually. We don't get better overnight, and sometimes our growth is sporadic and uneven. This same pattern of growth and maturation also occurs in our fellowship. As our growth grow and evolve, our resources change and so do our needs. Groups may change trust the servants, meeting format, will share, or location, depending on their resources and their needs. Service committees may EXP and their subcommittees reach out into new territories, or combine their efforts with other communities. These changes may not always be like progress, just as our personal recovery doesn't always develop in an orderly fashion, our fellowship doesn't always evolve as we would expect. As groups and committees go through this growing process, 
their collective punchings often erode as well. Changes in the punchings are not a cause for alarm, merely part of the growing process. When a group or committee has set their action from a loving higher power, it may ask some of its members to go carry on that direction. When we ask members to serve, we then set them apart as being somehow better than the rest of us. Leadership in is a service, not a class of membership. For this reason, we call our leaders trusted servants. When we choose a member to serve us in some capacity, we exercise mutual trust. We trust the conscience that influence our selection since it reflects our collective relationship with a loving higher power. Then let us to the member we have selected to serve. We have faith that they will apply principle in their actions, seek and share the most complete information available, and work to further well being and our fellowship's common welfare. The relationship of trusted servants to the group is reciprocal. Members chosen to serve are asked to do so with dedication and fidelity. And those who chosen them are responsible to support their servants. When we are asked to serve, we understand that we are responsible to a loving higher power as expressed in the group functions. We acknowledge this responsibility when we approach service with a selfless and loving attitude. The principle embodied in the tradition apply to all our actions. We can look to our individual conscience as well as the collective conscience for guidance in all we must do in fulfilling our responsibilities. This connection with the group conscience is enhanced when, as trusted servants, we carry a continuous flow of information that is honest and open. It is further strengthened when we seek to serve, not to govern. We help form the conscience of our group or committee through the direction of a higher power by presenting a complete and unbiased of information. The ideas and the action of the group then are conveyed in our representation of that conscience. Our trusted servants lead us best when they meet by personal example. Ideally, we choose them for the principle of recovery we see at work in their lives. We encourage our trusted servants to remain open to new ideas, to become knowledgeable about all aspects of service in NA, and to continue to seek personal recovery. All of these attributes are essential to their ability to serve us well. Applying spiritual principles. We noted earlier in this chapter that personal service arises from the practice of principles. By applying these principles, we learn to seek their action. We talk to our sponsor, 
swing up a new core integrity as a sign that they are customers.